So carrying on, trying to complete the uh, first practice exam out of the P-book on graphs, tables, and equations. So we're on to question two. See the previous videos if you like for question one, part A and part B. So the height h after d days of a flower seedling is represented by the graph drawn below. So we see height on our y-axis and d on our x-axis. Give the equation for the height of the flower seedlings in terms of the number of days. So if you're clever about it, you can look at the graph and figure out the information directly. But um, one way that most of us have been learning to do this is using our calculators to help us figure it out. So we actually need to look on this graph and figure out where this line crosses exactly on one of these hashes. So not almost on it, but exactly on it. That looks like it's pretty exactly on it. Where else? That one's not quite centered. That one's not quite centered either. Not quite there. But that one looks like it crosses, or will cross perfectly. So there's two data points we can use. We've found two data points. So we can make ourselves a little table. We've got days and height using the two points that we have. So one, two, three, four, five, five days. And what's the height? Zero. And out here we have 30 days and a height of 20. So 30 days and a height of 20. Two points. We can use our calculator. Going back to stat, we've got five and 30. And for our y values here, our height values, we have 0 and 20. Put in our data points, go in with graph, go in with graph, and we actually want it to be a straight line graph because that's what it is, and if we look here, our points look like they'll be straight. Go ahead to, clout, to hit calc, and we hit x when we're looking for a linear relationship for a straight line graph. So here we end up with some decimals and negatives, but that's okay, it's all right. So we've got y is going to equal 0.8x minus 4. And our r squared value looks good at 1. So from the calculator, we have y is equal to 0.8x minus 4. But again, we need to remember to change our variables. We always write x first and then y. So writing this appropriately, we'll have h is equal to 0.8d minus 4. Okay. And that's our equation. Moving on to the next part. What is the height of the flowers of the seedlings after 18 days? So one way we could do this if the table was, or if the graph was really accurate, is we could actually come to 18 days and read it straight off the graph, but this one's actually hard to read because our scale's not very accurate there for number 18. So what's another way to think about this? 18 days, that means that d is equal to 18. So yeah, we can use substitution again. We can put d into the equation for 18. We could have h is equal to 0 0.8 times 18 minus 4. You put that one into your calculator, you're going to get 10.8. Four, and our units here are centimeters. So our answer is 10.4 centimeters, and that looks kind of about all right. 18 days, just above the 10. But again, if you're not sure, you can double check this, putting the equation into table. So we'll delete that, these two equations. And we'll put in the equation that we want, 0.8. 8x. Again, always just use x as your variable. Keeps it simple. And show our table. So we see negative values at the start, which we would expect because it's below the 0 on that axis. And it starts to increase when we come to 18 days, 10.4, just like we found. So that checks out. Okay. Um, part three, explain why part of the graph that is drawn is below the x-axis, what this represents. So they're asking us about this selection, this part of the graph here. 
we see that it's below zero, it's below the x-axis, it's a negative value. So what are we actually graphing again? Let's remind ourselves of this. The height of a flower seedling after D days. So the height probably being measured from where the seed is, how tall it is. Well, where do you plant seeds? Do you plant them on the surface of the ground, or do you usually put them under the earth a little bit? Yeah, under the earth a little bit. So that's what's happening here. We actually can explain this by saying our seed starts slightly under the surface because we've pushed it slightly into the ground, so it's got a slightly negative height. So the seed is underground, negative height. To start, as it grows, it eventually will break the surface. of the earth and grow taller with positive values for the height. Okay, looking at part four. Another seedling variety has a growth rate that is 20% faster than the one represented in the graph above. What would the equation representing this variety of seedling be? Okay, so we need to remember to use our number skills here. They've given us some information here, we just have to be careful about it. So they've given us a rate that's 20% faster. Remember, what is represented by the rate in an equation? Oops. This is going to be our gradient. Remember, the gradient is always equal to the rate, telling you how fast things grow. So in our first equation, we had our first rule was 0.8d minus 4. So our gradient here is equal to 0 0.8. It's the number attached to the d here. And here we're saying that it's increased by 20%. So they've got a new flower that has a growth rate 20% faster. So we need to find an increase of 20%. So we need to increase 0 0.8 by 20%. And some of you guys remember how to do this. 20% um, is converted to 0 0.2 as a decimal, and to find the increase, we're going to times it by 1 plus 0 0.2. So 0 0.8 times 1.2. And our answer for this is actually going to be 0 0.96. So this is the new gradient it's the 20% faster rate. So instead of our writing our equation as h is equal to 0.8d minus 4, we're going to say h is equal to 0.96d minus 4. So the same y-intercept, meaning we're still starting 4 centimeters under the, center, under the surface of the earth, and that we're just going to grow 20% faster at 0.96. So that's the equation for this one. Explain the difference between the original graph and the one resulting from the equation you found in part 4. Relate your answer to the growth of the seedlings. And we may use to wish the grid below to aid our explanation. Okay. So let's do this. This is the original. is on here. Let's put a graph up for the other one, the new equation. So if we're not sure how to graph it, we'll go to Menu, into Table, exit back to find the right thing, and let's put in the rule that we want. So we want 0.96x minus 4. Table. And this will give us some data points to go with that we can put on the graph. So let's look for ones that are easy to do. Um, Anything easy? Not really. Let's change our step size. Good chance to practice that. So exit backwards, go into set, and we can change our step. So we'll leave those where they are, and we'll change our step maybe 
to, I don't know, um, 0.25. See what comes up here. Then we go back to table. So now we're going up in 0.25s. And we can get some data that's a little bit closer. But still not perfect for us. So what could we do? Well, we can go to graph if we want. Um, five. And we've got our rule here. And we're going to ask it to draw this graph. Remember, don't freak out if that happens. Just rewrite your rule. Is usually all it takes. Minus four. Draw it. So here we are. That's what our graph should look like, but we need some points to put it on the other one accurately. So let's go to G-Solve, hit F5. Remember, root is your y, sorry, your x-axis, where it crosses the x-axis. So let's figure out where it crosses the x-axis. So it's going to cross at um, 4.16667. So we can come back onto the graph here. Find 4.1. It's going to be somewhere in here. So that's one point we have. And what's another point we have? Shall we do maybe 20? So we can use G-Solve again. And you could use um, Y-Calc. So if we want to know a Y value, we can put in an X value. So our X value of 20. And that gives us a Y value of 15.2. So at x equals 20, we're going to have 15.2. So we can come on here at 20 and 15.2, just above it here. So we're starting to see a few little points on the graph here. And remember, it has the same y-intercept. They both start at negative 4, so that point there will be the same as well. And if you've got a few points on here, you can take your ruler oops, and draw the straight line on there. Yeah, it didn't actually make it through the points. Let's try again. It's hard to do on a tablet. I'll tell you that. Well, almost there. Try one more time. After that, I give up. <laughs> okay, I won't give up just yet. <laughs> Maybe I should. Okay this way. Oh. Well, hopefully you guys can get it better. I'll just try this by hand, see if it works out. Goes to the points somewhat straight. So this is the new one. Sorry about that. So comparing the new and the old, which is the question that we're looking at here, what's actually happening with these guys? So remember, this one's got a 20% bigger rate, and this one has the original rate here of 0.8. So our question, again, is explain the difference between the original graph and the one resulting from the equation you found in part 4. So our original was not y, sorry, h is equal to 0 0.8d minus 4, and our new is h is equal to 0 0.96 minus d minus 4. Okay, so what's the same? If we want to start with that. They both have the same y-intercept still, so they both have 
So y intercept equal to negative 4. And this means they both start growing uh, 4 centimeters under the earth from 4 centimeters under ground. Okay, so that's one bit there. Um, now the rate or the gradient is different. Gradient, which again is our rate. So the new seedlings will grow 20% faster than the original. So the remember they want us to relate the answer to the growth of the seedlings. So the um, line that represents the height of the seedlings will be steeper than the original. So our flowers are actually going to grow 20% faster. Um, and this also means the new flowers will break the surface sooner than the old. What I mean for that is look down here at the graph. I can actually highlight that. So the new flowers they're going to break the surface. Remember when they cross the zero axis, there, the x-axis, they've actually start to come out of the ground. So these guys actually start to do that, you know, a little bit less than a day, but about a day earlier than the other one. And the new, the original one sprouted and came across the surface of the earth at five days. Remember this one comes across at 4.1167 days. So the flowers will grow 20% faster, and the new flowers will break the surface sooner than the old days, or sooner than the old flowers. At we've found that to be 4.1667 days. And again, we did that using the root button on the calculator. Come back in here to GSolve. Still have our equation in there. Hit root, and that gives you the value of x when it crosses the x-axis when y is equal to zero. And that's it for question two.